Hey, I just want to welcome everybody to a legendary talk. This is Garage Talk, Sea Stories Edition. All of us Navy veterans, active duty, been around the world. I'm here just to share the platform of what we've been through, all the good times, the bad times, and the reminiscent. If you ever go to a bar or see some sales out there talking plain spades, this is what we talk about. Only the real can recognize the real. Active duty, military, and veterans. We all understand what we've been through been around the world and we have a lot of stories to share so i created a platform so we can share that story the one two how y'all doing out there this is um garage talk sea stories episode three episode three garage talk sea stories all right we're gonna go into a little something different this time um we always talk about the sea stories in the garage talk but this time we're gonna talk a little bit more about the post navy you know me, I did 13 years in the Navy. They had some great times, great stories. One of the biggest things is I'm getting a trade. You got to get a trade while you win. So I got my trade in, um, in culinary arts, right? Never thought I'd be a chef. Never thought I'd be a cook. And I want to get that thing clear too, man. A lot of people bring the word chef down. The word chef is being watered down. Just because you can cook a good steak, that does not make you a chef. Just because you go in a restaurant and you make it, oh, my cousin's a chef. He cooks for X, Y, and Z. I'm a chef now. I'm a chef. It's, it's watered down. You know what I'm saying? It's almost like I don't want to be called a chef anymore because everybody calls themselves a chef. You know, like, I ask my people, what is, what's the definition of a chef? What do people see as a chef, right? And they say, oh, somebody who cooked real good food. Somebody who could cook varieties of dishes. Somebody who cook real good. Everybody has all these different terminologies of what a chef is. So what's a cook then? Right? You got to remember. You got to be cooking. A chef is not the cook. A chef wears a white jacket. Chef wears a white jacket for a reason. He's not getting dirty. He knows about food safety, sanitation. He knows how to train. He knows the food costs. He knows budgets, right? That's what a chef does. A chef is an all-around person who knows everything about the culinary all in one. But a lot of people got it twisted and they think because you can make a good steak dish, you're a chef. It's getting watered down. Stop calling everybody a chef, right? You know, I just got to call that out. I went to, I went to a few culinary advanced, advanced courses, 20 years of cooking, I don't think I consider myself a chef until I actually learned everything about the kitchen. I was able to train. Me hands-on cooking all day, I can't be a chef like that. Because if you're over here, if you're over here making a steak and somebody messing the rice up, you're still getting blamed for everything, right? That word chef is leader. That's right, man. It's leader. It's, it's, it's leader in culinary. You got to know the term. You got to know everything. Just because you go to school for four years in culinary doesn't make you a chef either. And I, I'm really against... People go to school for college for four years. I don't think it makes any sense. Nobody's going to hire you and pay you more money because you went to school for four years in culinary arts. You could be a dishwasher and you could rise up as a as an executive chef from the bottom, right? People want experience. People want knowledge. I would say go in and go OJT, learn to do some culinary artwork, and then go to school just to tighten it, tighten up some areas, some advanced courses. Right? There's nobody's going to pay you higher money because you got a culinary degree. I'm sorry, that's facts. Uh, uh, you get a, you might have get a hospitality degree or accountant because you still don't need to know that financial in the culinary business. You need to know financial, you need to know food safety, you need to know all that stuff. So next time somebody say chef, man, just be correct with me. Right? I'm going I'm to give you a story where I was, um, I got certified for the American Culinary Federation. ACF Culinary um, Federation, right? So I thought it was cool. So that was, it's a, ACF is an organization who came up with a way to actually classify people in what they do. So you get a little bit more respect on your name. You got the sous chefs, you got the, the culinarian, you got executive chefs, chef de cuisines, you got um, chef educator. So in order to get that, I remember when I became a certified chef de cuisine, I had to like do a hundred question test. And they had to do the physical, um, I had to actually do the, 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 um, the cooking part where I had to make certain dishes, get the merit part right, missing place in place. 
all these things had to go up and I got tested and I became a certified chef de cuisine by the American Culinary Federation. When I came out here to, um, I remember I, I had the ACF come to my restaurant and they have ACS group, the president, nobody on the board was certified as a chef de cuisine, but they ran an organization for ACF. That right there, I really lost a lot of respect for it. I'm like, why do I even go through the hassle to get certified if people run an organization that's not certified? All right, I'm going to pass that. So that's just my, my thing when people always say chef. The word chef is getting watered down. So don't call everybody a chef if they know how to flip a steak. This is more to it. All right, chefs are leaders. Remember that. So now, fast forward, I'm going to go into about, you know, post-Navy. So you do... For me, in my experience, I did like 13 years in the Navy cooking. But when I got out, I had to, before I was getting out, I had to figure out how to get that real bag. So all, all I did was I took all the knowledge that the Navy taught me of running this multi-billion dollar company, and I used it for myself in the civilian world. How did I do that? I started the government contracting, right? So if you open your eyes up, you'll see... Um, in all the military bases, they got civilians working in military base. They got civilian cooks, civilian dishwashers, civilian janitorials. While I was in the Navy, I was doing those same jobs those civilians were doing in some of the bases, right? So they have government contracts ran by civilians. So I got, I, I got educated in government contracts, and I figured out, all right, I used to hate doing inventory. I used to hate doing um, everything that in the kitchen you would do. Everybody hated that. People, nobody really loves working 15-hour days, getting four, four days off a month, right? When I was cooking, we do this thing called five and two. Every other weekend, we get off work. And then your off days during the week, you still had to go to work on a turnover day. So you, on your uh, off day will, will be like five in the morning to 10. After you got early, earliest you get off is after quarter, you'll get off like 8 a.m. But sometimes, you know, when your off day is on Monday, Everybody think that you're gonna you're supposed to be off. Um, everybody looks at it as a first day of the work week for them, so they want to put you to do a whole bunch of hassle before you get off of work. So you might get off of work about twelve o'clock on your off day. So you work Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and then your off day is Monday. You, you get off of work at twelve o'clock, and then you go back to work on Wednesday. So you pretty much only get to sleep in for one day. All right, but let me go back and tell you how to chase that bag. Every every area in the military. They have a, gov of a civilian sector that does that job, right? I just use culinary, working in, the, working in the kitchen, working in the galleys. And then I found out the government gives out like $100 billion a year. I think it was actually in my field, they give out $7 billion a year on government contracts in the culinary arts industry. Base galleys, feeding the National Guards, VA centers, all these, all of the above. So I was like, wow, I scratched my head and I found out they don't have enough minorities, enough veterans applying for those contracts. So I had to educate myself some more. Knowing all this money's out there, how can I get a little bit of the bag, right? So educate yourself, go to the PTAC office, educate myself more. Then when I looked at the statement of work, same stuff I was doing in, this, in the military, they have a civilian world, but they pay you a million dollars a year to do it. Why not get paid a million dollars a year to do something you already learned how to do and became a subject matter expert at. So like right now, my company, I started a company called Admiral's Experience. We're about five different states and we feed National Guard troops everywhere. Right now we feed in 600 troops, 600 troops in, um, in, in, um, in Vermont, Jer Jericho, Vermont. I never touched out there. I sent my guys out there, have cooks and chefs that work for me. I sent them out there and they get the job done. And my job is, as a chef, executive chef of my company slash CEO, is to look at the recipe, know what they're doing, look at food costs, look at the budget. And if something wants to happen, I go out there and teach my guys how to do it, right? And back another thing is, a chef, all chefs ain't that great of a cook. They're knowledgeable, though. So I just want to, you know, get that in there and be proactive, post-Navy, get in your bag, and look at those government contracts. Look at those federal contracts that you can really get some money out of, right? And, you know, I'm doing it, and I'm still trying to do more. And there's a lot of mentorship out there. But if you, if you was in the IT work, 
if you was into um, uh, construction, whatever you did, they got a job out there, and they're giving it away the money. You just got to know how to apply for it, all right? So, I just want to be short and sweet. This is um, Garage Talk Sea Stories Podcast, Episode 3, Chef Jeff Cole. Make sure you go ahead and get some of that merch, all right? King of the Kitchen Gear. You got the King of the City. Um, ChefJeffCole.com. Link in bio. Thanks.